So we'll spend the remaining of the opening ceremony um, with our awards ceremony process. Um, going to go a little off track to start with because we have a, a rather unique and, and special situation. Um, when we last gathered together in Portugal in 2019, the winner of the Carol and Travis Jenkins Awards was Andre Yaravoy. Um, the award was accepted by Andre's colleagues because Andre had been detained while carrying out harm reduction services, HIV prevention and monitoring for the Ukrainian Alliance for Public Health in the occupied Luhansk People's Republic. Andrew had traveled to the regions previously, um, but at that time he was traveling with his OIT, his opiate agonist therapy medicine, and it was seized. And the Luhansk People's Ministry of State Security decided he was guilty of large-scale drug trafficking. This is medicine he was carrying with him. It was a month before Andre was able to access a lawyer, and then finally, after much work, at the end of 2019, after 489 days in detention, Andre was released as part of a prison exchange. So we asked Andre to join us here in Melbourne at HR 23 so we could see what his work meant to us, so we could stand with him, so we could hear his story directly from him. So I invite Andre to the stage. Hello, dear friends. I would like to thank you for the invitation and say I am very proud to be the recipient of prestigious Carol and Trevin Jenkins Award. Back in 2019, when I found that the Harm Reduction International gave me this award at the time when I was transferred to a local prison in the occupied East, Eastern Ukraine after being tortured in a basement. The news about the award not only lifted my spirit, but also gave me confidence that everything will end well, because I know I am not left behind by others. Presently, my homeland, Ukraine, is brutally attacked by Russian Federation and in a state of war. Russia is bombing our cities and killing civilians. Therefore, your support is very important for us, both of us, for country Ukraine and for people who use drugs. Many of our brothers and cities and sisters who use drugs died and the front lines defending Ukraine. At the same time, many of our brothers and sisters in Eastern Europe and Central Asia continue to die because of the repressive drug policies of the governments of our countries. I would like to convey to you messages from Eurasian network of people who use drugs and put, and the national network of people who use drugs in Ukraine, Volna. First, uh, we need continued international funding to solve our problems. But our, our community needs direct funding. We want mediators that manage our funding, would listen to us and effectively support us, not manage us. Second, more of us receive opioid agonist therapy and other harm reduction services. But we don't receive good quality drugs for it. Too often medical professionals don't treat us as human beings. Third, we constantly hear our officials saying that our countries are moving towards civilized Europe, but the reality is that our governments 
pass laws that restrict our rights and marginalize us. Fourth, we very need devices and services for the check and the composition of those substances that we are forced to buy on the black market. Drug checking is a matter of life and death. If we're serious with the prevention of the overdose epidemic, we need those small devices and services. Last, we are ready to act. We are ready to tell the truth what is happening on the ground. We appeal to all of you, dear experts present here, we need your knowledge, your experience, and your contacts. Please help us. Don't give up on us. Stay close. Thank you. Glory to Ukraine! Slava Ukraini! Thank you so much, Andre. It's an honor to have you with us, and I know it's a, a long, long journey.